Hello friends, my name is James. And this is my 1965 Alberg 30 Sloop Tritea. We are on a mission to sail around the world and see as much of this beautiful planet as possible. We're currently working our way through the South Pacific. I can't wait to show you everything we see. This is a bonus episode for American Samoa. Um, I was only in Pongo Pongo for a week and about half that week I was stuck on board because of bad weather. I didn't film a ton while I was there because of that. Um, so this is the best I could do for an episode for you guys. Um, it's only like 13 minutes long. Uh, I, I did have like some amazing experience with some locals there, uh, but they weren't comfortable on camera. So I didn't film any of that, but um, interacting with the local Samoan people was the highlight of my trip for sure, my time there. Uh, so here's what I have to offer. Uh, check it out. And um, I hope you enjoy this little bitty glimpse at American Samoa. Hello friends, we're here at Pongo Pongo in American Samoa. Been anchored a few hours and the clearance dock just opened up for customs. And I got the call to head on over, so hauled up the anchor, which is hard work. And now we're heading over to the clearance dock. Clearing into American Samoa was the most unpleasant clearing I've ever experienced. I had to deal with 12 different officials and the whole ordeal really soured my view on American Samoa. Not to mention I was informed that I was not allowed to anchor anywhere else around the island but inside the harbor at Pongo Pongo which has notoriously bad holding. I would never encourage other yachties to visit this place. Okay, I'm all cleared in. I did not film any of that because it was zero chill in that process. And it was the most absurd clearing process I've ever experienced. And I'm an American citizen in America Small. But, that's behind me now. Here in Pongo Pongo, American Samoa. Drug anchor, pretty bad last night. Um, I wasn't really concerned until we started getting close to this. This is a Polish flagged boat, aft of us. <clears throat> but uh, I had my track on and everything. This, like, the holding here is notoriously terrible. And even when I set the hook, the two different times I've set the hook, it sounded like it was dragging across like a sidewalk for a good distance before it grabbed something. So last night I was watching it drag, just waiting for it to catch something, paid out more scope. I think I have like eight scope out at this point. Um, and we're stuck now. 
as far as the hook is stuck now so but this morning when it was like dragging i warmed up the engine and everything just in case we had to like drive and haul up the winds are blowing like i don't know 20 22 knots or something right now it has been dead calm the whole time i've been here i've been here like three or four days and just kind of resting recouping and doing some boat work and um yeah the plan was today i was gonna go on a hike do some filming we're gonna go try to see some birds and stuff but if the wind's blowing like this and the boat's dragging anchor i might be stuck on the boat all day which is fine i got plenty to do but so that's how my night went and uh it's time to get back into my coffee for the morning So it is still very, very blustery here in Pongo Pongo, but I have to get some stuff done. This is Saturday, everything closes on Sunday. So we need to get ashore and get water and provisions for the trip to Fiji, which is gonna take place, uh, hopefully we leave on Monday, Monday or Tuesday, but I'm gonna try to clear out Monday morning and leave that early afternoon. Um, so we're gonna brave the blow and uh, take some trash ashore, the jerry cans for the water, and um, bags, granny cart, all that stuff, and try to go get some water and provisions from the local market. So, let's get to it. Got tied up in the lee of the wharf with the dinghy and uh, whoo, almost lost my cart and <laughs> almost lost my cart and both my jerry cans. The wind made it roll. Um, now it's time to go find the market and um, get taken care of. So we're going to fill up our water tanks here because I was advised against drinking out of the tap at the fuel dock. Um, Two fifty, five gallons, pretty cheap. So I'd have to make a couple trips. We have three quarters of our 35 gallon tank full now. So I'll probably do these two, put those in the tank and then come back get two more as my backups. Um, got all my provisions, cost me $100 versus $200 in uh, Bora Bora. So the food was, as everyone said, way cheaper here. So that's good. So all over on the streets here in American Samoa, hanging in trees, you'll see these empty gas canisters, like welding cylinders. 
Um, and at like just before 6 p.m. every night and just before 6 a.m. every day, they ring them for what's called SA, S -A, uh, which is family prayer. And you're supposed to be under a building. Like this is called a fale, traditional fale. You're supposed to be under a roof for I think 15 minutes. Technically, you're supposed to go in your home, sit quiet and pray with your family during that time. And they have these people kind of like prayer police that stand on the streets in yellow shirts that like, you know, tell you, oh, you, you can't be out here. You need to like get undercover or sit down, be quiet or whatever. And I guess the deal is to, if you're driving through the village during Saw, you can keep driving, but you're not allowed to stop and go somewhere. Um, and again, that's like 15 minutes at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And you'll hear them ringing all over. And then at 10, around 10 p.m., they ring them as a curfew to tell the kids they have to get inside for curfew. Um, pretty interesting. First day I walked around, I saw them hanging everywhere, and I was like, what in the world is happening here? And then did some research and found out. And then you'll, you can hear them from the boat ringing in all directions. I guess they also ring them as a communal alarm, like if there's a tsunami coming or something. Um, but I'll try to get a recording of it being rung uh, before I leave. Had to stop and do an emergency repair on my granny cart. The axle bent and I had to like bend, break a piece of wire off the cart and put it up in this thing and bend it and get it, get it back in working order. The water is too heavy for it, so. But I need it to get back to the boat. Um, so, all right, let's get back on the road. Someone was nice enough to give me a ride because my car broke all the way. So nice of them to pick me up. I was like, damn, it was gonna be a bummer. Guess I gotta think of a plan, plan B if I, well, I was just gonna call a taxi, but my little cart broke, the wheel broke all the way off and these water is heavy. There's a lot of work. Okay, now to get back to the dinghy and transfer fuel and then bring the jerry cans. Luckily the fuel station is just right here so I don't have to, I don't need the cart anymore. Whew, let's get it done. So it's Sunday morning here in American Samoa, in Pongo Pongo, and this is probably the last full day here in American Samoa. <clears throat> Hopefully I clear out in the morning and push for Fiji, but I've been invited to a traditional Samoan family lunch, Sunday lunch, where the whole family gets together and they cook and, and spend time together. And I'm super stoked to get that experience. Um, if you've watched the channel since, a, like, Hawaii, you know who Captain Mike is. Captain Mike asked his friend Char, who's, I believe she's from here, or she's at least, like, Samoan <clears throat> culturally, and, um, he mentioned that I was coming here, and she said, oh, my cousin Jed is actually there right now at his house in, on American Samoa, and Jed was nice enough to pick me up and take me to lunch and then drove me to show the, show me his family's village the other day, and I met um, the chief, their chief of the village, who is his older sister, Jane, who was really sweet. And then they brought me back um, and invited me to dinner, or not to dinner, to lunch today. So I'm very excited about that and um, look forward to getting a little bit of like authentic culture here in American Samoa. So now it's time to head ashore and um, get the day started. My hosts were not comfortable being on camera, so I was happy to put the camera away and just enjoy their company and soak in as much as I could. And I had an absolutely wonderful day. And thank you so much, Jed, for showing me around and the invitation. And after only being at American Samoa for one week, 
it was time to get everything prepared for another ocean crossing and make way for Fiji. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching, fair winds until next time.